Hello everyone. Now that we have finished studying Newton's first law of motion, we can move on to studying Newton's second law of motion. But to understand Newton's second law of motion and to understand the implications of the law, we must understand the concept of momentum which is also known as the quantity of motion. Now we know that it is easier to push a lighter object as compared to a heavier one. For example, I know that it is easy to displace a bicycle as compared to a car. Now we know this and from this we can make a very crude observation and say that this must mean that the force required must somehow depend on the mass of an object. So we have this conclusion with us. But then I can also say that even if the object has the same mass, if the object has a greater velocity, it exerts a greater force. For example, as you can see in this picture, this bullet has shattered the glass of this car and this is only possible because of the great velocity of the bullet. If this bullet was somehow thrown at the window, obviously the glass would not shatter. So that means that the force required also depends on the velocity of the object. Which means I can now make a very crude observation and say that the force required depends not only on the mass and not only on the velocity but on something which must be depending on both the mass and velocity of the object. And this something on which force depends upon is known as momentum. So momentum is a quantity which depends on mass and velocity and it's very important because ultimately it helps us answer the question what is the force required or exerted in a particular situation. So let's quickly study what is momentum. In particular we will be looking at linear momentum. Now linear of course you know means straight line and momentum we know by now means quantity of motion. That means I am looking at the straight line quantity of motion. So what is the definition of linear momentum? It is nothing but the product of the mass of the body and the velocity of the body and you know that product means nothing but multiplication. So if I try to write down a formula then I will write down linear momentum p, small p is the symbol, is equal to m into v where m is the mass and v is the velocity. And then I ask the same questions that I ask whenever I learn a new concept. I say what are the units of this new quantity? So to do that, I look at this formula and I say, look, mass has the unit of kg, velocity has the unit of meter per second, and that means the unit of momentum will turn out to be kg meter per second. And similarly, in the CGS system, it will turn out to be gram centimeter per second. The next question to ask is, what kind of a quantity is momentum? And to do that, again, I look at the formula and I say, mass is a scalar, velocity is a vector, which makes my quantity momentum also a vector because it is a product of a scalar and a vector. So I have answered the question what are the units of momentum and I have answered the question what kind of quantity is momentum. Now let's make one more observation about this formula. So if I look at the formula P is equal to mv, I can look at three different cases. Case 1 is suppose if the mass is constant, case 2 is suppose if the velocity is constant and case 3 says that what if the entire momentum is constant. If I look at case 1 then I am saying that m is constant. Now if m is constant then this equation becomes something like p is equal to a constant into v. And whenever you have p is equal to constant into v it means that p and v must be directly proportional and therefore I say that p is directly proportional to v. Now what would be the situations in which p would come out to be directly proportional to v? It could be a situation in which mass is constant which means for example you say that the same body is moving with different velocities. In that case m would be constant and the greater the velocity the greater would be the momentum of the body. Let's move on to the second case. In the second case we have v is a constant. If v is a constant then now I say p is equal to m into constant but the logic is the same p and m now will turn out to be directly proportional and the case under which I will get this scenario is when I have different bodies moving with the same velocity. So v is constant that is there are two bodies or more moving with the same velocity but they all have different masses. In such a case the mass and momentum of each of the bodies would be directly proportional the body with a greater mass would have a greater momentum. Finally, I come to the case when the momentum itself is constant. Now be careful, I am not saying that the mass is constant, neither am I saying that the velocity is constant. All I am saying is that the total momentum that is the product of mass and velocity is constant. In such a case, I will say that V and M turn out to be inversely proportional 
And the scenario under which this happens is if you have bodies moving with different masses and different velocities, but ultimately having the same momentum, that is the same product. So you could have a 2 kg body with a 3 meter per second velocity or a 3 kg body with a 2 meter per second velocity. They have different masses and different velocities, but their product, that is momentum, remains the same. In such a case, the one with the greater mass has a lesser velocity and the one with the lesser mass has a greater velocity. That's exactly what I mean by V and M would turn out to be inversely proportional. So I have direct proportionality when mass is constant, direct proportionality if velocity is constant, but inverse proportionality if the total momentum, that is P, is constant. So these were my three cases. Now I'm equipped to study Newton's second law of motion. Let us finally write down what this Newton's second law says. Now why do we need Newton's second law? Newton's second law is the fundamental law detailing the calculation of force. So let's quickly now without further ado look at the statement of Newton's second law of motion. The statement says that the rate of change of linear momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied external force on it and this change in momentum takes place in the direction of force. Let's look at it bit by bit. Now I'm going to try to write down a mathematical expression for this law. So help me out. The first word in the statement says the rate of change. Now as I've said many times before, if you see the word rate in your formula, you divide by time. Next word is change and when you see change, it means delta that is a small portion. The next one is linear momentum and that is nothing but P. So look at this rate of change of linear momentum. This portion of the definition is represented by this symbol. So this is the representation mathematically of this portion of the statement. This means rate of change of linear momentum. Next it says that this is directly proportional. So I have the direct proportionality sign. But directly proportional to what? It is directly proportional to the applied external force and this is the mathematical expression for Newton's second law of motion. Now, let's ask the question as we always do, what exactly are the quantities in this expression? In this expression, P is a vector, T is a scalar and F is a vector and therefore this will help me understand the second part of the statement. It says change in momentum takes place in the direction of the force. So if I look on the board here, I can see that the only thing the direction of force depends upon is the direction of momentum because this is a scalar. So this is not contributing to the direction of the external force. This direction depends only on this direction. And therefore I can say that the direction of the change in momentum is the same as the direction in which the force acts. So this is my interpretation of Newton's second law of motion. Now once we have done that, I will take a look at what else I can do to simplify this expression. The first thing I say is that look, in most of the systems mass is constant. So I say that okay, if mass was constant then what? But before I answer that, let me see if I can write down delta P in a better way. Now we learned just now that P is nothing but the product of mass and velocity. In that case, a change in V should be nothing but M into the change in V plus V into the change in M. That is a total change in momentum is nothing but the sum of this first term in which I have mass and change in V plus the second term where I have V and change in mass. So this is the change in momentum in totality. But now I'm looking at the case where mass is constant. If mass is constant, then that means that delta M is zero and therefore this part moves out and what you are left with is that delta P is M delta V only. Now if delta P is M delta V only, then I can rewrite delta P upon delta T as M delta V upon delta T. And this M delta V upon delta T is nothing but M A because acceleration is rate of change of velocity. So you can see that this portion is nothing but acceleration. So A is delta V upon delta T. So I replace delta V upon delta T by A and I get the final expression that is F is equal to M A. So is F is equal to M A Newton's second law of motion? Absolutely not. 
do not confuse f is equal to ma for newton's second law of motion f is equal to ma is not newton's second law of motion this is newton's second law of motion this is something you got under the assumption that mass is constant and if that's true then what happens when mass is not constant well if mass is not constant then now i will have to write down the entire expression for the change in momentum and if i do that then i don't get f equal to ma and therefore i leave you with a warning and that warning is that force is not always a product of mass and acceleration it is only a product of mass and acceleration in those cases in which constant mass persists so next question you will ask me what are the systems in which mass is not constant so let's take some examples of variable mass systems for example you could have a leaky sandbag a bag is filled with sand and you are moving but there is a hole in the bag so the sand keeps on falling so the mass in that system is constantly changing because it is decreasing you could also have a melting ice block since the ice is melting the mass keeps on decreasing so again it's a variable mass system you also have the most important example that is of rocket propulsion the fuel that burns to make a rocket go up in the air is so much that it is effectively a change in mass so these are classical examples of variable mass systems but of course again the most important examples would be when you have objects at light speeds and light speeds change everything so in relativistic mechanics which is the mechanics in which objects approach the speed of light in those cases mass is no longer a constant of motion of course we will not be dealing with these cases but it's good to remember that f is equal to ma is a very special case of newton's second law so now that we have learned everything that we know let's try to apply it to a sum let's try to solve this sum the sum says that there is a machine gun mounted on a horizontal frictionless surface at some instant the gun fires bullets of mass 20 g with a velocity of 800 meter per second with respect to the car now the number of bullets gun fire per second is 10 find the average thrust on the system so let's quickly solve this sum it's a very simple sum let's write down what we already know the first thing told to us is that the mass of each bullet is 20 g so i'm going to rewrite it here m is equal to 20 g the second thing i know is that the velocity of each bullet is 800 meter per second so i write down v must be equal to 800 meter per second now what has been asked of us we have been asked what is the average thrust on the system so i say okay thrust is equal to question mark now what exactly do you mean by thrust thrust is nothing but the force and therefore what we have been asked is to find the average force now before i move on let me ask you a question can i use newton's second law of course i can that's what it is used for to find force in a given sum but then is it a constant mass system or a variable mass system well as you can see this is a system in which the machine gun is constantly firing bullets and therefore with each bullet the mass of the system is changing and therefore i am talking about a variable mass system and as i said before if you have a variable mass system then the delta p gets replaced with that big expression and therefore force comes out to be m delta v upon delta t plus v delta m upon delta t and if you talk about instantaneous motion then deltas become derivatives and therefore i have f is equal to m dv by dt plus v dm by dt now this is the expression that i must work with because i am looking at a variable mass system but then each bullet is moving with a constant velocity and if my velocity is constant then that means that this portion that is dv by dt must be zero and therefore i am left with the expression that f must be equal to v dm by dt now i already have v it is given to me as 800 meter per second the only thing left to find is dm by dt or how much is the mass changing per second of the system so if i try to find out dm by dt that is how much mass is changing per second well that's pretty straightforward dm by dt is nothing but the mass thrown per second by the machine gun which is nothing but the mass of each bullet into the number of bullets fired by the gun each second now we have been given both these quantities mass of the bullet is 20 grams number of bullets per second is 10 and therefore dm by dt or the change in mass of the system comes out to be 200 gram per second of course i'm not going to solve it in cgs units i need si units so i convert and i get 0.2 kilogram per second 
So now I have dm by dt, that is I have this quantity, I have already been given v, so I have this quantity, I know that we don't need this quantity because it is zero, so finally I can say that the thrust on the system is v dm by dt, where I already know what is v and dm by dt, v is nothing but 800, dm by dt is 0.2 as pointed out to you. So this gives me the thrust on the system as 160 Newton and the answer is that the average thrust on the system comes out to be 160 Newton. This was a pretty straightforward sum but I wanted to give you a taste of what a variable mass system looks like. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe.